This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. And welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Uh, I'm Ryan Carter, fresh off uh, a trip out east, sitting here with Kinger, who came in hot, too, off some travels. But uh, let's take a second to thank uh, our sponsors. This is presented by Pilot Games. Make sure you you use their products when you're out and about, um, because when you do, your community wins. Um, Kinger, tell us about your travels. Where are you coming in from? Hot, right off the bird, right into the seat. Yep, got into a RAV4 Uber, rolled down here. Um, I'm from Missoula, Montana. Uh, kind of a parents weekend. The wife is a is a godparent of her friend's daughter, so I was sort of like a plus one godmother's husband family weekend. So pretty much no responsibilities whatsoever. Nice. Which is pretty good. Yeah, Missoula's cool. It's like... Uh, the parts of Montana that the Californians haven't ruined yet. That's, oh, that's what the Montana people tell me. I got it. I got it. That makes sense. Yeah. How was the suspension on the Rav Four? Because lately I've been on a stretch of Uber rides where there's been no suspension. It's like hard bench seat. So he had a glass apparatus or plastic, and then he had a handwritten note. I actually took a picture of it and <laughs> sent it to some people. It said, "No eating and drinking." Uh, don't wet the seats. Um, uh, I don't know. It was just a handful of, of rules uh, that he had put together. So I just took a quick snapshot of that. And did you did you follow the rules? I did not break any of the rules. Actually. <laughs> I actually, if I would have had some food, it would have been awkward. But no, I did not wet the seats. Or I can't remember. He had about six or seven of them. Uh, how was your trip? You were on the other side of things. I was at like an Airbnb with no heat. Uh, you were living the high life out east. Yeah, it was fun. I, How are the hotels? Good. Hotels are great. Yep. And so it was Philly wash back to back Thursday, Friday, day off in Hoboken where I lived when I played in Jersey Saturday and Sunday was the game in Jersey. Um, but it was great. Yeah, the everything was fun uh, in Wash. I didn't do, I didn't have to work. It was a national broadcast game, the Philly game. So I met the team in Washington on Thursday night. Actually, I beat them there. So I was there, had dinner in Chinatown, cruised around for a bit, um, FaceTimed the girls in front of the White House, the girls meeting my daughters, and uh, got them all excited about how cool dad is. And yeah. <laughs> did they see your uh, your new addition here? With they haven't. That? They haven't seen it yet. We'll we'll get to that. But uh, uh, one thing that was really cool, I think the president. I got caught like in the middle of like the president coming home. The motorcade? The motorcade, yeah. And the Secret Service, they just came in, like flew in, stopped all traffic, lights, everything, telling everybody to sit still, move, don't cross the street. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. The motorcycles come yeah, forward. Yeah, motorcycles rip through, and then like six SUVs come flying through. And then there's like, seemed like a special... <laughs> special vehicle i don't know it had like a huge thing on the back we were joking around that maybe it's like a queen size bed maybe like they i don't know but it was some huge vehicle um well i think sometimes don't they double up with the you got like the the five suvs that are the real ones and then they got the decoy yeah five i mean so who knows maybe you were in the decoy line could have been in the real thing don't know but that's good. but i intercepted that that's good. And the kids were impressed with this whole White House kind of. Yeah. Dad's Dad up. was getting some street cred. He's making some moves. <laughs> yes. Talking to the parent. Talking to the president about the U-10 right. power play. Yeah. yeah. Like trying to set it up that if they win districts or something, they get a chance to hey, meet the president. I like that. <laughs> I like that. A visit to the White House. Yeah, that was good. Uh, but so let's get to the bag now. Uh, Saturday, day off in Hoboken. I've been wanting a belt bag. I think we talked about this last year. Yeah, for listeners at home, this is a what the kids would re- refer to as a cross body bag, not a fanny pack. Man purse? 
man purse, Merce, all of those things are fair game. Um, a designer brand here, it's a Louis Vuitton, unless I'm missing something. Um, so this is this is a this is a purchase. You had a special, some special time in Jersey with yourself. Well, so it, it, actually, I picked it up on Canal Street in New York. So it's fake. Oh, yeah, it's fake. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. It's, I didn't, I didn't it's fake for sure. Yeah, I think it costs okay. forty five. Uh, uh, so let's let's just forty five bucks. Let's get to it. Yeah. So I, we Saturday. It's perfect. Unbelievable day, by the way, in in Hoboken. It was like eighty degrees. Like the yeah, it was unseasonably warm. Jump on the ferry, get over to New York. It's two in the afternoon. Walking with uh, a travel buddy who will rename, remain nameless, and we get about you know f- ten blocks into our walk. We're trying to triangulate ourselves, and there's this little motorcade of probably young teenage boys going on the bike lane as he he's checking his phone to see where we're at and where oh. we need to go. And there's, in the lead, there's a, a little person on a bike, looks like he's throwing something up to himself and catching it. And he catches m- my buddy with his head down and he, he ends up throwing this right at him and hits him right in the mouth. Turns out it was an egg, I th- it was brown. I thought it was like a dinner roll. I was yelling at the kid like, you idiot. And he gets hit with an egg, egg all over his shirt. Which and, and little person, you mean like officially a little person? Little person on a bike. Okay. So with you, a carton of eggs. So you ran into some sort of Mad Max. I thought it like was like gang. Jack, like, remember the show Jackass? <laughs> Do you remember that? Was there a shopping cart or was there it wasn't a, a shopping cart, but okay. the kid behind him had a pizza. So the, it actually doesn't end there. Oh my so, God. Okay. Keep going. So they come flying past the egg, yeah. the unnamed person. He's got egg all over. We're trying to figure this all out. I took a snapshot of the scene in my brain. There's a pizza on the bike. The guy behind him, rollerblader comes past and says, did he just throw an egg at you guys? And we're like, yes. He's like, I'm going to go shove him off his bike. And we're like, yeah, go get him. So he does. He rollerblades up there and he catches up to the kid with the pizza on his bike. He was, he was nearest him. Not the little person. Not the little person yet. And then he just, he flips (laughs) the handlebars of the bike so that the kid goes, a over tea kettle, over the top of the handlebars, pizza goes flying, Roller Raider picks up the pizza, throws it at little person on the bike. Now a little person goes down, now there's like a bunch of stuff going on all over the streets. And we're trying to figure this out. We're getting cleaned up. We walk up and there was like three or more, three or more people that had gotten egged, a vehicle that had gotten egged by the kids. So I don't know if they were filming it, if it was like a, like wow. a jackass moment, but we got caught wrong place, wrong time. That happened. So now we're on the lookout for a shirt because shirts are ruined. It was a nice white quarter zip, beautiful shirt, wrecked, full of egg, trying to decide if we should stop in a laundromat for an hour, get it washed, what we can do. Don't know. He's like, let's just, um, this is a perfect time to buy an I Love New York t-shirt. Let's go get it done. Yeah. We had to walk maybe... It was one foot. No, that's what I thought. It was actually about 15 minutes before we could find an I Love New York t-shirt. Oh, come on. It was unbelievable. So we finally get to Canal Street and he buys, we go into a shop, I Love New York. He actually bought like a Chinatown, I Love New York type of shirt. It was awesome. We go down the street. They have, I've never been to Canal Street before, but they had every kind of high luxury brand bag that you would ever want just sitting on the pavement on a towel and you just negotiate um, and my buddy was in a, he was in a mood, great negotiation. And I think the bag started at somewhere around 90 bucks, got it for 45, could have talked him down to 20. Yeah. And you got it. Did you consider the walk away? I, we walked, that's what he's, yeah. If you walk he, away, yeah. you're now you're, that's getting someplace. Yeah. My, uh, my buddy got got, so he wanted to get the, the negotiation maybe to get back to square, but nonetheless, I'm the real winner here because I have a, a Louis Vuitton bag now. And you never got egged. I didn't get egged. And, but the whole purpose of the bag is because this is what I keep the dry erase markers in when you're coaching the girls, the 10 UA girls, Okay, they love it. So all of a sudden coach is going to, he's going to draw some plays up on the board and he pulls out a designer belt bag and they just kind of go bananas. And it actually doesn't matter what you say anymore. They're just all in. You know what I mean? I like Martin St. Louis Vuitton. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's, this one says Louis (laughs) Vuitton. I have. Uh, 
Well, I just, uh, that was a lot that you just I came know. at us with. So, I so I want to, can we, let's backtrack momentarily. <laughs> so there's a vigilante rollerblader that's yeah. defending yes. the people of Manhattan. Yes. Okay. Okay. So he, he saw something. He didn't like. Is he part of the Marvel universe or DC? I don't Do we know. know? I, I, I don't know, man. And he just, and he, not only did he say. He was there knight in shining he, rollerblade. He very quickly assessed the situation and then <laughs> took down a child on a bike and was, threw a pizza at a little person yes. to settle a score with yeah. you guys. And somehow that's for you, vigilante. For you guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And also not mentioning that your bag was fake right at the start, you know, bury the lead. That's just, <laughs> wow. I don't even know. I, I, I hike the M in Missoula like everyone does. It took 45 minutes. I sweated a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know where to go from there. Do you have more stuff like this? No. Jesus. But this stuff happens from time to time. Yeah, I, I don't know if it does. <laughs> but uh, I just, did that guy throw an egg at you? It was amazing. So he's on like, rollerblades. We, we had a chat as he's rollerblading by. I don't know. It was weird. Like, he had the wherewithal to, like, talk to me, and I was talking back. Least likely hero. Happened. This all happened in probably 20 seconds, maybe. Like, yeah. there's never been a hero in rollerblades ever, right? I yeah. mean. But now there's inspiration for one. I know. Somebody's. I kind of feel like Iceman. Remember Iceman, how he'd skate around, kind of? He's yeah. he's probably the nearest thing. Yeah. Wow. That is that is amazing. I, I do kind of wish I knew who the other person was. Yeah. Someday. Nameless. But there's somewhere on social media, maybe a picture of a guy wearing an I Love New York shirt this weekend. Right. That'd be a dead giveaway. It would be a dead giveaway. Okay. <laughs> so if I was to dig in a little bit. I, uh, what was the mood of the nation on this trip? You know, um, they, they had the big victory against Edmonton, kind of almost like a bonus game. It's almost like the night before vacation starts, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they really played well. Hartman went crazy. And then the, the road trip itself was, you know, a little bit of a rugged ride. What, what did it feel like for you? I'd be lying if uh, I didn't confess to me wanting to bring this story up early to try to provide manufacturers some energy after the road trip. Now, it, it, I think everybody is feeling pretty good after the Edmonton game and then going in, the Philly game was just uh, a poor performance. And that was one where we even last week's podcast were like, you have to get that one. Yeah. And then the real test is Jersey. Right. So, but they got off on the wrong foot. Went in, played a better game in Washington. Marc Andre Fleury stopped six of the seven shootout shots. Wild had chances to win it. I mean, it seemed like, come on, win it, win it, win it. They didn't. And it was kind of like, oh, man, now all of a sudden you've taken one of four points going to Jersey. Seems like a must win. And Jersey just, the, again, it's kind of the same old story. That's, that, that's probably what's the energy zap is that it's, it's the power play has a chance, doesn't score, penalty kill, can't shut down the power play of New Jersey. And you have to give Jersey credit. Their power play is the best in the league. They're, they're at like 40, they're, they were 40% before the game. I don't know what they are now, but we play them again, the Wild play them again on Thursday. So um, it's 45%. I don't know. Like it's amazing how efficient and how good they look with the puck, but still the penalty kill has got to get it done. They don't. Now you take one point out of six on that road trip, and it was like you're hoping for four, maybe five kind of points. It's like, oh, no. I know. And so uh, when you were <laughs> having the experience you had, which I don't even know how to like, – when you were in the Jackass 5 film that they're filming uh, for uh, next year apparently, I was in Missoula, and I uh, I, list, I watched all the wild games on my phone no matter where we were. So I was like the guy. If we were at dinner or lunch, you know, I got the phone, you know, tipped up against something, maybe low volume, like just enough that you can kind of hear it around me, gambling on the games, thinking I could see the future, you know, like the wild would give up the first goal. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to live bet it. I know they're going to win. Now the odds are better. We're down one. Oh, Kirill's going to get three points tonight. He's he's due. I'm gonna I'm taking Kirill for three points and and uh, and just 
it was like I carried around this rain cloud in Missoula because people would look down at the end of the table and go, hey, how's it going? And yeah. I'd be like, ah, no, no, no. But we're going to, we have another power play coming, it looks like. So it was just, and it was like people almost like, well, what's wrong with you? Why are you bringing this white noise machine that brings you hockey sadness everywhere we go, you know, <laughs> re restaurants. <laughs> like, I'm just like, we're on hikes. You can hear like Philadelphia scoring in my pocket. Yeah, it was, I don't know. I, I probably should have just taken a little break, but I do it for the fans. You know, I want to get to have the You got to know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've got to be a pro, but yeah, it was. Uh, How, did like, did you get scolded at all for being on a trip and being tuned into this instead of being present on the trip? You know, I really didn't. I think it was like. I was so far removed from having any real value on this trip. Um, what you know, when it's like Speaker of the House, and then there's somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else. I was like, I was so far down there, kind of like just, he's happy. Just let him give him some queso, put him down at the end of the table. <laughs> Does anyone have a pop socket? You know, like I don't think anybody really cared, but I there were some moments. The Pat Maroon goal off the foot, like the greatest beer league goal by the the maroonaissance is happening my prediction is right i mean he's playing great so that pat maroon was was pretty special um you know and we're getting a lot of we're scoring you know this idea of you know a handful of players with 80 points you know you start seeing eck and hartman and and Kirill and zuki and you know there's they're putting the puck in the net i guess the challenge has been keeping it out of ours right mm -hmm. and no, it, yeah and, and, exactly and you, right. i know the injuries are a thing obviously but Special teams and, I mean, what, what's your take? I mean, I I tried to get something out of the group text, like what's going on, and people just said, you know, people are out uh, in special teams. You know, that's kind of what was coming up consistently. Yeah, the the thing that's I think you remain optimistic about is that you'll be, you're missing guys that play huge roles on your special teams too. So the hope is that somehow when they come back that they'll inject life into it. But what what seems like it's missing is still that moment. You know, and I, the Jersey game, I was thinking it's going to happen. So Pat Maroon scores, all of a sudden it's 4-3, Wild get a power play. Like here it comes, you know, here's the moment. Here's Alex Goligoski, thousandth game celebration into OT win, and then the team kind of takes off. Remember that from last year? Like, yep. like when's that moment going to happen? And it felt like, oh, this is a chance for it. It's a chance for it. And um, it, it just didn't materialize. And I think that's what the Wild are looking for. That's what they need right now is for, like, some – Marvel hero to show up on rollerblades. I was thinking the, like, <laughs> should he speak to the team? He's just got to show up. Just get out there. He rollerblades in. <laughs> yeah. He's holding some pizza. Oh, yeah. I mean. But that that's my take is they're playing well enough. The special teams are, are, are getting beat. I think if you combine them, which is sometimes a, a, a decent metric for your team uh, statistics, you combine the power play percentage and then your PK percentage and then yep. where you at, you rank it against the league. There's somewhere around 28th, 29th in the NHL. It, I mean, middle of the road and, and we're, you know, we're, this is a much different conversation. They, they just each have to find a way to be a little bit better. But I think you could also look at it and say like, who's, who's stealing games. You haven't had goaltenders steal a game yet. You haven't had your power play steal a game. You haven't had your PK steal a game. Like when are these games coming? And um, that's, that's what I want to see more of is just getting the, at least getting the one point, you know, kind of like they did in Washington where we've just been either winning or losing and, and we're not getting to the overtime. We're not grinding our way to points, especially on the road. And I think that's worth a lot when it gets down to it. We've played nine games, a lot of people in the standings have played less than that. And, you know, I, it's hard. You know, you, you don't want to – you got to keep banking stuff. You got to keep getting – like that point matters against Washington that they got to the shootout. And I, it was funny watching that. You ever – when you're watching that, you always think, I know the guy that's going to win. Like they just got to – all I could think of was Rossi just needs to shoot, right? And he shot very late, and then he kind of bobbled the puck and lost it. But I, I really thought we were going to win that shootout because Fleury's so good in the shootout, he loves it. I'm like, one guy's going to put it in here. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to put it in here, we're going to win this thing. And how, how big a psychological – because it, it is significant, right? It's a whole point you lose on that shootout. And, and it's sort of a, it's reindeer games. I mean, it's not even hockey. It's like this weird – 
extra thing at the yeah, end of the yeah. game. So when you're a part of games, is that really kind of like mm. I think the game the game carries more weight than the shootout. Yeah. So you I mean you're happy that you got one point. It's uh but you're you're not like terribly upset that you lost the shootout. And then if you win the shootout, you're equally not as excited that you dominated that game. So it's uh, it's kind of like an even keeled approach, but I think when you get to round six, seven, and you haven't scored a single goal, that's where it starts to weigh in you a little bit more. You're like, man, we had chances. You know, goaltender trying to chase down uh, records, needs wins. This would have been one for him. He played well. Uh, you know, like, gosh, why couldn't we score one? And, and then when they're reflecting upon that, you reflect on how the shootout went. Rossi had Kemper beat, just needed to take an extra set. Hartman had Kemper beat, just hit the far post. Uh, and other guys had chances to bury it and didn't. And um, those are the ones that I think are, are a little bit, uh, you know, a, a tougher pill to swallow. But never too high, never too low when it comes to a shootout win. That, I mean, and I think the guys took that mentality there too. It's like we, we played well enough to win. It was an improvement on the Philly game, on the Philly game, which is what you're trying to do too. Like you, you want to build on something. Philly game was no good. Let's be better the next night. And they were. They took a point. But unfortunately, they, they finished the weekend off against what looks like a wagon in New Jersey. Yeah, you had that Philly game, you know. Bobby Brink, Minnesota kid, working on a hat trick. Even Tortorella's like... I mean, he was celebrating. He's, he's like changed. joking with people. and like He ran down the bench to pat him on the back. I'm like, what in the hell is happening? This is just like emotional terrorism. Why? What? What is happening? Yeah, and... And that was just an awful game. Leah Hextall and the uh, – just that was just not the most enjoyable experience. But uh, we got to the next night. At least we got the one point, and it doesn't get any easier from here. Devil's coming back in and the Rangers. So we got a little Manhattan two-step here. Canal Street is, is coming to town, and it's, it's not going to be easy. It would be really nice to – get a couple signature wins against some really nice teams. And I think in order to have a signature win, you you, uh, you need your franchise player to play like a franchise player. And that's not me saying that any one individual here is to blame for them not having success, but magic players make magic moments in the wild need a magic moment right now. And um, Kaprizov, I think it, it's crazy because I think what we're seeing now is that it doesn't matter how talented you are, how good you are, what you've done in the past, there's still confidence and, and it, you can lose it. Those guys have it and can lose it for stretches of time, too. I think he had 12 shot attempts against Jersey last game. 12 shot attempts, at six or eight on net. I, I mean, that's that's production. You know, getting 12 looks at the net, I mean, that's – you can't ask for too much more. But there, what isn't happening right now is like the – you don't see – because usually when we watch Kirill, there's something that he knows that none of us – no or see and then that's how he ends up scoring a goal it's it's a pass it's a move it's a it's a hole in the goaltender's gear or the way that a goaltender's going to move and different things and um he finds the, the tiniest of holes and it's special and you see it and you're like my goodness this guy is something else but right now what you're seeing i think is a guy that maybe he's lacking a little bit of confidence in that regard and he's he's just shooting pucks on net. He's putting them in the corner and um, four check. And I saw him as forward one on the four check a lot last night. You go back to the Philly game. I think he's uh, in young kids at home. If you're listening to the podcast, you, you can learn from this too. Kirill had two turnovers in the Philly game that resulted in goals against. Yep. Now he's approaching the blue line and he's dumping the puck in the zone. And it's like the, I'm not going to cost my team this stuff anymore. I'm going to be safe with the puck. I'm going to throw it in. Now he's forward one on the four check, but that's not what he's good at. You know, it's almost like you got to double down. You got to have the jam to say, I'm still going to carry this puck across the blue. I'm still going to make a play, but the difference is I got to make the play. I can't try to make the play. I, it ha I have to execute it. Um, but right now he's kind of, I think he's kind of caught in between trying as hard as he can to get this stuff done again, 12 shot attempts, but just kind of caught in between a little bit. And that's, that's entirely confidence. So what do you, what are you, if you could, what would you say to Kirill right now to boost his confidence? Oh, I've been betting him like crazy. I'm waiting for him to pop. You know, I mean, his, uh, his floor would appear to be a point of game guy, right? And so, I mean, if you were to watch him this year, you'd say, you know, it's been kind of a, it's, it's been a sweaty start for 97. He's working 
hard. Nothing's coming easy. He is getting some points, but but it does show you what how much more is is there if it can start clicking. Maybe it's confidence. Maybe it's just a little momentum. I would tell him um, first thing I would do is I would take off his helmet. And I would just push his hair back and then put his helmet back on. So he can just, I think the hair kind of being sticking out of the front of the helmet, I think is holding him back. So I would just kind of get his hair into the helmet better. And I would just say, go have fun, buddy. Go have fun. You can't do anything to hurt us at all. Just go out there and just pretend you're at the pond in Siberia. You know, I don't know what it is, but just let's, let's just, let's get really really loose brother maybe tuck the jersey in like 99 but keep that special pad out your yeah, little hero the, in a half shell yeah get that just out get that out right from the very start and just just let it all be yeah i would just be i it just you're like you're good we got no problems with you man just keep it's gonna come what it's for sure gonna happen so you can either watch the pot boil you can bite your fingernails or you can just wait for the train to come because I can hear it coming. That's all he needs. Just just relax, dude. One more thing that's exciting, too, and you don't want to get too excited, and then this is actually a tough spot to come back from when you've been injured, but the, the hope is that Matt Boldy can skate in their next practice, and then they're playing 11-7 right now. I mean, just to balance it out and get four lines and uh, a bench that's even, not double guys up and do different things like that. Just go back to four lines, 6-D play. You've got Boldy back on power play one, whatever that looks like, and I, everything just seems that will will seem like it'll fall back into place a little bit if, you know, if if he shows up. And while they're getting good hockey from their depth, you know, and, and it's not like they're wasting it, but Rossi's good, Faber's good, Maroon's good. You know, you think about these guys. Mermis. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Mermis has been great. Some of these Dewar points are like, shorty. Like, they're getting good quality hockey from the depth. And then as soon Middleton, as... Middleton. Yeah, as soon as these, like, these other guys get back and get going, um, it, it, it could produce the magic moment and, you know... They'll just go on a run from there. But, yeah, the hope is that Boldy's okay, practices, you know, into the game. But you don't want to have, like, the pressure of turning things around beyond one guy that's coming back from injury either. So I think you have to be a little careful with expectation and then throwing a dude right into the fire like that. But if he comes back, that would be a huge help. Well, we're basically 500, right? I mean, we're kind of, you know, nothing disastrous, nothing great. Haven't seen the big storyline yet, but I think it's – if we can get these guys to start coming back, get a little jam at home, it would be wonderful. What was the weather like in Missoula? Like, was it snack weather? You said you went on a hike. Did you bring any any treats or anything on that hike? Like some uh, caramel dip? Well, it seems like apple season. You know, I didn't travel with any jimmies on the flight, T- TSA <laughs> and all that. I think this is over a three-ounce container. But had I – was there a Cub uh, grocery store out there? I would have rolled in. Uh, in my Montana John outfits, wore a lot of flannels. I wore a you went a, Yellowstone on I it. I went a short sleeve over a long sleeve, kind of like '90s Ben Affleck. I would roll in there with my Montana John outfit, look for the apples, find the tubs of caramel dip, and I would have bought one and maybe hike up to the top of the M in Missoula and have a couple fresh apples that my buddies don't know about. And a knife, like a really nice, like Ryan Hartman knife, and just cut up some apples and right on top of the um, enjoy some salted caramel, caramel dip from Jimmy's. That would have been an outstanding thing. I didn't do that, but I wish I did. And maybe some of you will. <laughs> That's Jimmy's salad dressings and dips. That fantasy was brought to you by Wild on 7th. Well, I didn't miss any opportunities um, in regards to the disasters that occur at my home. Oh, you had another... Like, uh, no, I didn't have any more disasters, event? but I, I did capitalize on them. At least I, I, I was ready for it. And when I noticed that there was some damage on the house and the hailstorm that went through and I checked Wild Constructions, uh, their map to, to find out that indeed I was within an area that had hail in the storm. And then you put all these pieces of the puzzle together. I decided, you know what? I should probably give them a call. And that's what I did. And Freddie Dean came out, checked out the house, saw some damage. You know the drill by now. 
um, got on the roof and the roof's looking good. The house is painted up, uh, concierge service. Now, again, it, it took about, I don't know, 45, 50 days from start to finish, which is probably the greatest part about it. Um, love the way they took care of me. They made it easy and uh, they'll do the same for you. So if you have any of those issues, go to wildconstructionmn.com. Look these guys up. That was really well done. I think you you live in the eye of the storm, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I don't know about the eye because the eye is The calm. eye is quiet, right? It's calm. Do you have an aunt named M, like an Auntie M in your family? No. No? But I do, my, I do have an aunt named Candy. It was Candy Carter, and she married a guy named Barr. No. Yeah. It was two R's, though. B-A-R-R. -R. Like Anthony Barr from the Vikings? Yeah, but it was Candy Barr. For real? I swear. That's perfect for Halloween. <laughs> I mean, what a, if Candy Bar doesn't give out full size, <laughs> no, <laughs> the guy in rollerblades just you can't rides give by. out fun size if your name is Candy Bar. Wow, Candy Bar. Yeah, it's Candy Cena now though, but it was Candy Bar. That's man, you got some stories today. Hey, what's the latest on the U10A girls? Well, they went into Chaska, uh, and my daughter, who's a stinker, I was able to watch it on Live Barn from Parm in New York City, and um, they 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 did well. They played well uh, in a scrimmage, and but my daughter did shoot the puck after the whistle one time. Ooh. Yeah. It was a flutterer, missed the net, but another girl came over and just gave her a little stick tap and like a, hey, don't do that. And uh, my daughter came home and was like, hey, dad, what's girls mean to me? I was like, well, you know what? This is a tough lesson. You can't do that. That girl was actually in the right. You can't be going out there and shooting pucks after the whistle. It's like, the, it's like a code. What code, dad? Kind of had to explain to her kind of how that works a little bit. You know, it's like the etiquette of golf or other sports. Like you just don't fire the puck after the whistle. But you, you, she was out of line. Yeah. But she doesn't, the part of the code is she can't let that other girl know that. So the girl comes over and is like, hey, shoves her, why are you shooting after the whistle? She has to still say to that girl, I'll shoot whenever I want. <laughs> but she knows that she did something yeah. wrong. So you have to do and, both. You go, you know what? I'll shoot. And if, <laughs> if we play this game a hundred times, I'm going to do that 99. And then just gets off and goes, yeah, I'm good, dad. Sorry. Dude, I wish we, I wish we could mic these kids up. How great you would have that to do be both. just to hear some of these conversations they have out there. Uh, it's but so good. we canceled, uh, we canceled the practice on Halloween night. Okay. Candy's more important to a 10 year old kid than hockey. So uh, they're going to be trick or treating. And tonight, the hope is that we play some type of hockey trick or treat, um, hat trick or treat, scoring game, give okay. out some candy. I, I want like to wear that. a costume, but um, I don't think that's going to that's gonna happen. It's all about safety now. And we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about this. Uh, we'll take a minute, be silent, uh, and honoring Adam Johnson. Terribly sad what happened here. So let's take a second. We don't know what happened, uh, but obviously a, a hockey player, Minnesota native, Duluth, lost his life while playing the game we love. And gosh, when I heard that, it kind of shook me, stopped me right in my tracks. It's like this, this doesn't seem right. 20, Freak accident. 29 years old. Like, it, I mean, it it hurt. Um, so, and, and that was a maybe a terrible segue, but it, it has me thinking, I'm sure it has everybody thinking now too. It's, you know, let's go have fun playing hockey. Let's wear our costumes on the ice. And it's like, man, you know what? Hug these kids, take care of them, take every precaution you can. It's, uh, um, it's terribly sad. Uh, thoughts and prayers go out to, to his family, friends, teammates, everybody. Um, it, it, I mean, it's terribly sad, but, um, yeah, that's. Just unbelievable. Did you know him? I, I didn't know him. It's his age, I mean, I don't know how. Yeah, a little younger. Uh, but again, the hockey world gets so small that you know somebody that knows somebody. Bill Guerin, I think, had him in Pittsburgh and different things. And um, when you know these guys on a personal level, you hear a story like that, man, it just, it just crushes you. Yeah, that's awful. Um, so we did have a guest uh, that we're going to get to. Yeah, and what did you think of talking to the uh, the Gus bus? Well, the Gus bus is sneaky because he seems quiet and kind of reserved. You, you didn't know. He's like the international man of mystery all of last year. I didn't know anything about him. Then I sat down with him for a hot wings challenge. I was like, oh, my goodness, this guy's an absolute riot. Yeah. Uh, but he's uh, he's fun. Um, he's uh, He's got a good personality, great sense of humor. Uh, he's, he's fun to chat with. He broke down the... Uh, the Wilds Swedish Mafia. He, he literally put him on like a, 
a chart, you know, who, who each person would be, what role they had, who is, who's higher ranking than someone else. I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah. And a surprising person Weird. on top you'll have to listen to, but uh, the Don of the Swedish mafia is not who you would expect. No, so. it's not. And uh, yeah, no, he, he was great. I, he, I just, yeah, he's kind of a, he's a little bit of a wing nut for a goalie. He's not what you think. And for a Swede too, he, he's down to goof around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's uh, like, but you can't tell it right away, but it's there. You know, even with this thing, we had him say that. <laughs> we had him say, howdy, boys, in the Gus Bus commercial, which he, I don't think he's ever said the word howdy in his <laughs> life and doesn't actually know what it means. And so we're like, hey, we, we need you to say howdy, boys. And so it was like 10 times, howdy, boys. <laughs> How, howdy. Howdy, howdy. Boys. howdy, boys. Oh, howdy, boys. Boys? Howdy, howdy. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard pronunciation. Howdy, howdy, howdy boys. Howdy boys. <laughs> okay, howdy, boys. But now that he's learned that, it's like a, he's got a little Pez dispenser, a little candy joke where every time he walks by, you see him. Howdy, boys. <laughs> he's getting on the ice or if he walks by the podcast studio. Howdy, boys. It's like he's a quick learner. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's a good time. I, I thought the conversation with Gus was uh, That's great. a good one. There's more meat on the bone. He's going to have to come back. Like He's the one where interview two is going to be a blast. Yeah, he's, he's, he's good stuff. Um, should we get into it? Well, our guest here today came in looking awfully fresh. Nice comb over, manicured beard. The best thing is if you ever need help with any of your, well, what would that be? Your hair products? Grooming needs. Grooming needs. We've got the guys for you. It's Duke Cannon. And they've got the supplies down there. So I, I know that's why you're looking so sharp. So sharp. Easy for me to say. Can you mention that what uh, Gus was doing when he walked in with the roll of hockey tape? Well, I mean, he's, that's he's, one of the classiest things we've ever he's seen. He's obviously pod. conscious of his appearance because he's got the hair, the comb over looks good. The beard looks like he ran a comb through it. There's product, skin's on point. And then he wanted to make sure that there was no lint on his shirt or maybe it was dog hair. Dog hair. We know he's a big dog guy. Um, but anyways, you're looking dialed right now, Gus. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, yeah, anytime. <laughs> so uh, let's get right into it. You're a uh, dog guy. What do you got at home? Uh, well, I got two dogs. I got one uh, Dalmatian, um, a girl, and then I got an Australian Shepherd. Yeah, Nemo? Which one's Nemo? Nemo is the, the Australian Shepherd. Who, who picked the names? Uh, well, I think, I think um, my wife picked them. Did you think it was confusing to name your dog? after a fish no that, that'd be like naming like a goat simba or something yeah no uh, no because we we kind of thought about ne like defining nemo it was like yeah it, it kind of works and then we're like we got in that we got that second dog and it was a uh, a female dog so we're like should we name this one dory and we're like no that's yeah, then, it, then and it's, it's like, <laughs> then the joke was over. You know? So then we're like, no. You're pretty committed to Pixar at that point. Yeah. <laughs> There's no Dalmatian Pixars, right? Uh, no, no, that's Disney, I think. Yeah. Um, do we want to warm him up or do we just get into it? No, him? I think uh, he's we've a, got to. He, we've got yeah. to. He's going to have some good answers. All right, let's see what we got here. Rapid fire. Who do you text the most? My wife, I guess. Keep going because I'm not ready. <laughs> what, what's your nickname? Uh, Gus, 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 I guess. Any others? Like, I always wonder, everybody has, uh, like, everybody has, like, their, their nickname. Fionkin. What is that one? Uh, so on my sticks, it, it was my old equipment. Oh, yeah. He started calling me Phil Fionkin, because I was always late with the laundry. He was always screaming across the room. It's like, Phil Fionkin, where's the laundry bag? <laughs> so then, and then he started like, because he, he was in charge of ordering all the hockey gear too, so he just put it in all my... So all your gear instead of... Yeah, instead of like Gustafs and like everyone else on the team has, it says Phil Fionkin on all my gear because Power <laughs> have that in their system. And it just, now it's just a funny thing that I don't want to remove. Oh yeah, that's great. Uh, do you have any pet peeves, like things that annoy you? 
pet peeves? Yeah. Was that? Uh, that must be something that that one doesn't. Turn only Americans that. have pet peeves. So like things that like annoy you that people do, like sounds, um, anything that like kind of grinds your gears. I don't know. Oh, I th- I, in general, I I hate how polite North Americans are. <laughs> it, it's it's driving me nuts. Like tipping twenty percent no matter what. No, it's polite. like it's like every time I call someone or I I start a conversation, it's always hey, how are you? Or like, how was your morning? Or like, yeah. it's always like those first 30 seconds of a phone call, it's just you being polite back in back. And in. you just want to get right to it. Yeah. Like. That's like the Minnesota goodbye too. Cause that, on the backside of that phone call, it's okay. Well, see you later. All right. Bye. See ya <laughs> later. Yeah. <laughs> what do you listen to in the car? Ooh, a lot of EDM stuff. Uh, yeah, Martin Garrick, stuff like that. It's your birthday. Where are you going to dinner? Here in Minnesota, it's probably... I like Billy Sushi. Seems like a lot of guys do. You have a green light, get to go out, get loose. Any NHL city, which city are you picking? Ooh, I think Vegas. What's your favorite social following, like social media follow? Like a count, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't have Twitter, so I don't follow anyone there. I, I don't really follow any, like, person or anything. He's a leader. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's the – do you think Travis Kelsey is good for Taylor Swift? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope they have kids. Uh, what's the hockey jersey you had as a kid? Ooh, I had a, a Colorado Avalanche where it said Philip on the back with number seven. Nice. You went first in it. That's solid. Just number seven. What was your first real job? Hockey player. Gosh, these guys have got it. I, I, yeah. No, I worked. I worked on a hockey school. <laughs> that was pretty much it. What's the last thing you binged, watched a movie or a show? Um. Probably some of those miniseries that like four episodes. I really like that chess one with uh, the Queen's Gambit was pretty good. Yes. Buying clothes, where do you go? Uh, H&M? H&M, yeah, no. <laughs> no, that's... Ikea? Um, I usually just go to Lululemon. Nice. They have comfortable... What's your go-to drink at the bar? Uh, cider. Hidden talent. I'm a very good chef. Last game of the year, season's over, cheat meal. Where are you going? Shake Shack. Who plays you in the movie? What actor would play you? Um... Tom Cruise. Why? <laughs> Why? No, he's a handsome-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. I agree. Sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, so great. Uh, so you said, Sweden, you want to get some guys back. You excited to go over there and play? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ideally, what do we have, like seven Swedes or something like that? How many are on this team now? We did lose Four, a couple from last year. Maybe. Brodeen, Eck, Gus. Johansson, if Jesper Volstad makes it as mm-hmm. a third goalie, that's maybe five. Am I missing one? No. Zuki, kind of. Zuki, yeah, he's an honorary yeah, Swede. I that's heard right. about this. Yeah. That's right. How does he, he really, he, you, you let him in the club? He's one? Yeah, yeah, no, he's in, he's in the team. He's, uh, yeah, he speaks Swedish. Like, what's, what's the initiation? Eating pickled herring? Like, what is it? Pickled herring. Fermented herring? herring? What Fermented is herring, yeah. Fermented herring. Yeah. What is that? No, it's a... Uh, I don't know, a traditional dish you eat in the summers or like in the fall. Um, that's very, very salty and tasteful and, and smells smells a lot. <laughs> in, a, in a good way? <laughs> oh, well, s- no, not really. It's It smells way way worse than it tastes. So what, like, what do you eat with it? You put it on a hard bread with uh, mashed, p- or like you put potatoes on there, put... Just a few pieces of the the herring there with a few clicks of sour cream, tomatoes, and uh, a little bit of dill. Oh wow! 
yeah. No, I'm I'm excited to get you back after that wild the hot wing, wings the from hot last wing year challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we were doing the hot wings challenge last year, and he actually crushed it. You went for the hottest of the hot sauces, which was amazing. Like, you almost had to sign a waiver before they would let you even try it, and he just dove in day before a game. I don't know that that was the smartest decision. But then... Uh, How did you do the next day? Did you play well he, after He that? fired a bullet. Oh, okay. And you got some hot sauce in your eye, as I recall. You rubbed your eyes, maybe? Yeah, yeah. we talked about that, like, not putting your, your fingers yeah. in your eyes, and just yeah, straight away... Yeah, straight away. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, Eyes are burning. Yeah. They're watering. Yeah. So with this Sweden trip, uh, you know, if I was bringing somebody to Minnesota, you know, I want them to rip some pull tabs, you know, yeah. go to a meat raffle, do all the Minnesota things. What are the things you want the guys to do when they come to Sweden, whether it's experiencing something or eating something or what, what, what are you most excited to show the team? Yeah, no, probably food wise, we're, we're definitely going to go to more, more home cooked spots uh meatballs of course um they have the what do you call it it's like a sandwich cake kind of mm -hmm. pretty pretty common thing to to eat like instead of like a birthday cake some sometimes you do the sandwich cake instead um the fermented herring you're gonna try it <laughs> see if i can force someone else to try it too um see the 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 castle old town is very beautiful um yeah no i i i let jojo and brodine lead the, the way do the schedule mostly yeah what's your pregame meal here in the states <laughs> meatballs and mashed potatoes and what goes with the mashed potatoes um uh, Lingonberries and yes, oh, yes! lingonberries, yes, lingonberries, L L yeah, lingonberries and the uh, and the cream sauce. And you 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 have those here in the states. Where do you get lingonberries in the states? You can get them in like at the grocery. Get store? them at Cub. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cub. Ah, I'm gonna um, go get some. I never. I don't have ever had it. Hey, never? Swedes love it though. So last night, um, I want to know what it's like when you're not playing in a game and you get to like have the backwards hat you're on the bench you're like talking to people watching the teams get mad at each other is it pretty I know you want to play and I know you're a starter and all that but is it kind of awesome being the backup goalie like when you're just you kind of know it's like recess like I'm going to go out there and hang out what, what do you what's that like I've always been curious about that yeah no it, it's it's pretty fun like um, you kind of relax and then like last night you get a little nervous when they're <laughs> they score a few few ones in the first period there and then you're like oh do I have <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like do I have to jump in there and and play so it's like when it's going fine and and you're winning it's it's awesome you're sitting there and then you're chit chatting with with the defensemen coming in and and Broads is like what should I do here like this guy is talking like that and they just talk about I don't hockey. Know, yeah, about hockey. And then some of the guys like, hey, you seen this girl there in the stands? <laughs> and then that, that normal stuff. But yeah, no, you're just sitting there relaxed and talking to, I got Tony, the equipment. Tony, Tony yeah. right behind me. So um, yeah, we have, we have a great time. We, we talk about it a lot. It feels, it's almost like you're a little too out zoned from the game sometimes that you're. Yeah, does like your afternoon change? Because I, I was asking Flurry about this last year at one point because like, you know, Brizgalov, uh, you, you hear the stories how he'd be, you know, some ranks, the, there's not enough room on the bench. So the goalie will be like in between the stands, like San Jose's that way, kind of. There's a couple others. I think Montreal's that way. Yeah. And you could just order, like he'd just order like a hot dog down from the guys right there. He'd be eating a hot dog, middle of the game. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have to go in, you got a hot dog. And uh, has that ever happened? Like, have you ever had those scenarios where you're like, you're like, ah, you know, I'm pretty confident I'm not going to play tonight. I'm going to swing by, you know, whatever it might be, you know, McDonald's. Shake Shack. On the, shake Shack <laughs> on the way of the game and just, you know, have a night off. And then all of a sudden you're playing with a cement anchor in your stomach. No, not, not like before the game. Um, uh, when I wasn't playing, when we played against Syracuse, they had awesome hot dogs there. So me and the, one of the equipment guys were standing on, because on, you're sitting on the opposite from the bench there too, and you're like, I don't know, five meters away from the locker room. So as soon as it was like a TV timeout or something like that, <laughs> me and the equipment guy ran into the locker room and crushed the hot dog. 
once a period, <laughs> and, then, and then we had to, because we had the strength coach was like around the area too, so we kind of had to like sneak by him and like run so you couldn't see we were crushing hot dogs in the middle of the game, <laughs> and then not say anything to the head coach either. Yeah, hey, this is between us, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, in the uh, in the Wilds Swedish Mafia, the the guys you have on the team now, what would be the roles of the different guys? You know, with Johansson and Eck and yourself and. Brodeen, like what what kind of responsibilities and and Zuki we should know what what how do you divide out what what are the roles I think I think Zuki is the the head guy I he's think. the he's running it yeah he's the Don yeah and then we have <laughs> well Eki Eki is kind of the the dirty worker like the enforcer <laughs> yeah the enforcer <laughs> the cleaner <laughs> <laughs> yeah the cleaner um Jojo is probably second hand to to Suki like making the calls Broads I think me and Broads are like Johansson's like the like the polisher the consigliere yeah, yeah. yeah. like the he's, polisher it's like this yeah he's kind of this making the smart decisions when Suki's yeah and me me and Broads I don't know, I think we're like in between there we're not like the enforcers really or not the you're not the glue the, guys yeah the glue guys. I love that. <laughs> Zuki is the Don of the Swedish mafia, even though he's not, he's Norwegian. Oh, that's so good. Um, hey, I, I got a hot tip when Carter was, uh, I was doing more research than Ryan. Is it accurate that you, you went deep into Frisbee golf at some point? Like, is that, or maybe someone's just screwing with me? Yeah, no, I, I play. You got a good, you, you're, for all. You're, you're pretty serious? No. No, I'm I'm more of a casual player. I like, like I I play a lot of video games, um, and I I need to, to be out in the nature more. Got my dogs walking, and then, being frisbee golfing is a super easy activity to go out and and waste two hours out moving your body and, going to different parks. They have courses set up, different parks or or stuff like that. So it's, it's easy. Then I bring my wife and and friends and. It's not like normal golf where it's like this steep learning curve just to be able to get around. It feels like everyone can throw it like a frisbee. How would you describe your frisbee golf game? I would say I'm I'm uh, I throw it pretty far. I I only throw uh the underhand. I'm a little too afraid about my my shoulders. I throw the underhand, so I'm usually on the on the the right side of the a little slice, baby a little, fade. A lot of slice. Big hitter. <laughs> yeah, and then my putting needs some improvement. Okay. I, I, I think that sounds pretty good. Hey, how are the dogs sleeping these days? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right this moment? Yeah, no. Right now they're pain in the ass a little bit, yeah. Yeah, they've been keeping you up, right? Yeah, mostly one of them, the Dalmatian mostly. She's, yeah, she's on that type of month right now. Oh, okay. So you're you're not getting a lot of sleep, and it's the dogs. Not uh, no, no. We had, uh, congratulations in order. You're a dad, right? Thank you. As of this summer. Yep. Well yeah. done. Yeah. And how's uh, now? Tell us the name and uh, Volrad. Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. Volrad, the whole name. Lars Volrad Delmer Gustafsson. Four names. Yep. So what do the four names mean? So Lars is my middle name too. So since we you can have your middle name before your actual name. So me, my dad, my grandpa, and now him have Lars. Volrad is from my my uh, grandma's father. That was his, his name. Um, so we wanted to keep that because it's very rare now in Sweden. It used to be a little more popular mm -hmm. back in the days, but now it's, I think he might be one or there might only be one or two left that have that name. And then Delmer is also one of those old names that I'm the only one that had it, and now he has it too. Awesome. Does he get along with the dogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he started to, like, like figure out that they're actually dogs now and trying to, like, if, if he gets close to the fluffy one, try and grab it a little bit. Fun. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you're enjoying being a dad, I take it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. It's It's like when you got the the dog at first like you you can have a shit day and and then you just come home and he starts smiling at you like he doesn't have a clue in the world what's going on out there yeah that's so that's fun, what yeah. it's like when carter comes to do the podcast <laughs> and he sees me um hey you were 
talking about the demon and every the chatter. Um, I know that you're normally in the cage, but what are what are some of the personality quirks of the uh, defenseman when you're sitting on the bench? Who is vocal? What are they talking about? We heard Midsy's always got something wrong with his gear. He's a big <laughs> like his his skate's not right. Or what what are kind of some of the themes from some of the guys on that side of the bench? Yeah, as you, as you said, Midsy, I'm on him every time he because he ties his skates. He reties them probably ten times a period. And then on the bench, and on he the, has bench. doesn't he use the true skates, the ones that yeah. you don't even need to tie? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like they're they're molded to your feet, yeah, and there's like, like you barely much get them on. <laughs> and and then he starts complaining, like he get a brand new pair, and he's like after he's like, yeah, these are done, they're trash, they're so soft now, I need to retie them twenty times a period. Oh, and he, I don't know, that's the best. That's a probably a Tony problem that he wants new skates all the time, but it's yeah, he he redo them all the time. I'm curious what what goes on in a goaltender's head during the game. Like on the bench, you've got people to talk to. You can say my skates are so loose and whatever. Like what what is it that you're like? How do you entertain yourself for 60 minutes out there? I mean, obviously the puck's in your end sometimes, and you're on it. But let's say it's a two minute power play and it's never coming down. Like what like what's going on? No, I. It depends. Some nights you just sit. You have your like you know you have a song on your mind. You standing there like miming it to yourself like watching the scoreboard a lot seeing those funny commercials or stuff like that that's on <laughs> on on there or trying to figure out which one of the three cups that the puck is on there on that seltzer <laughs> thing <laughs> stuff like that and then and then usually it, like i'm just standing there thinking about different things and then it's something pops up and then tv timeout comes and i'm rushing to the bench and, and ask tony or flower about those questions and then we just <laughs> chit chat about them and I, I feel like it's it's hard to be focused for 60 minutes yeah. straight without yeah. like thinking about something else so it's, I I feel it's good for me to like let my mind off the the focusing part like throughout the game no I agree because the, the, the conversations on the bench as a player are probably 50% about hockey 50% about just something completely random yeah you know and you're just yeah. entertaining yourself a little bit you know and I'm like the goalies have to be doing that I just have no clue because they're kind of by themselves yeah yeah and then and then like you block the puck there and then then you have a big hurdle and then you you see if you recognize a guy either on the other team or or like a defenseman or or forward coming down and then you like talk to them and, and try and be yeah try and get something back from them instead of just standing there by yourself <laughs> I always try to see if you could get somebody to laugh you know what I mean because they want to they want to like make you mad but then if you can like somehow get them to smile like yes I just won who who talks the most I, I want to say I saw Kachuk went down all by himself with you in that game and oh, was, in the Florida one yeah I was yeah, I, I was wondering I was like <laughs> he was unsupervised I was like we got Matthew Kachuk by our goalie alone yeah. um what what was he saying no that was I, I was starting that conversation oh, okay. <laughs> so so I think I I think I blocked the puck there and then it kind of became a scrum to my right there and then Matthew was there and uh Goligoski was standing there with him and they were kind of first just standing there watching the scrum and I, I was like Hey Matt, yeah. Hey Matthew, how's your how's your brother Brady doing? Because I played oh, okay. Brady, Brady in Ottawa, and then he he looked up and and he didn't answer first, and then him and all of a sudden him and Goose were like going at it too, <laughs> so they were like kind of fighting, and then they got scored to the bench, and then he came back after and he's like, hey, what what was your question? <laughs> That's and so it, funny. I assumed he was just doing yeah. something horrible. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, is anyone seeing this? Um, that's that's great. So that was just a regular conversation. Yeah. What's it been like playing with uh, Flurry? You know, what's, uh, I, I don't know exactly where you sit in the locker room, if you're next to each other, who you're at, but has that been a pretty cool experience to be with one of the all-time greats? Yeah, yeah, especially at the, at the game rink, I'm sitting right next to him, and and on the road we usually sit pretty close to each other, and and like how he's he's it feels like he's always late. I I think I'm late when starting getting dressed and and all that stuff, and then he comes in when it's five minutes left, and just all of a sudden he has all his gear on. <laughs> you don't know how he do it, and 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 like I don't know if you've seen the becoming a while with him. Like between periods, he has 
still have so much energy. It feels like his battery is never empty. He's just standing there doing push-ups in the in the locker room between the periods or, or doing those squat things. Uh, and then how emotional he is about the game and how much he, he loves like winning. Yeah, no, that's What's true. What's the score of the prank game? <laughs> All right, now I, I, I don't know who did it, but I saw someone got pranked in Montreal. Someone got a little shaving cream on them when they were done <laughs> showering. So I got accused this morning from from Brandon Duhame about doing a doing the shaving, the shaving cream, cream? On, on the towel. But I don't know what he's talking about. I have no clue who did it, and <laughs> I have my suspicions, but I don't know. Yeah, but you don't know for sure. Because uh, so what's that? There, you get done was, showering. There and, was socks. And no, it's all he's over. doing it. Well, this was Flower doing an interview in Montreal. I think it was probably one for local media there in Montreal. Okay. And uh, in the midst of it, he got shaving cream uh, to like, the face. Like pie in the face. Exactly. Kind of deal. Exactly. And, and then they probably gave back to someone in the showers after. Yeah. Like it, So usually in the showers, you have these stacks of towels, obviously, because, I don't know, 25 needs the, the towels. And I don't know how it does it. If it like puts them under... Or because they're fully, I don't know if it's like open up and just put a lot of shaving cream between them. Oh, is that how we get? So then you open the towel, yeah. you throw it over your yeah, shoulders, you, and then you get shaving like, cream all like over you your back. You don't look on both sides of the towel. You just turn and like start doing this, and then you just all of a sudden you're all white all over, and you just have shaving cream all over your body. <laughs> so you, that happened to him? No, yeah, to Brandon. Brandon oh. Duhame got oh, it. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, and then you're he, not talking about the no. flurry pie to the face. You're talking Duhame. Duhame got caught. Oh wow! Yeah, he he grabbed the wrong towel. Yeah, Dewey won. Mess with the bowl, get the horns. Yeah. So, but like, do you keep scoring these? Because now, did whose socks did you sew last year? Was that flowers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was flowers. And then next game or two games after that, someone sewed my socks, and I, I thought it was flower, and I was like, didn't say anything to him or anything, and <laughs> and then I came up to practice one day, and I had all my like street clothes all in the goalie net as a goalie with my shirt and number and name on <laughs> like stand there as a whatever you call it like a yeah. fake shooter goalie. tutor yeah. shooter tutor yeah. <laughs> so what does sewing the socks mean what, what are you, you just, can't get your socks on you go to put your socks on is it yeah. the street socks or like hockey yeah, socks, street socks. No, no, street so socks. it's just sealed yeah, yeah. that's a, yeah. that's solid like, so you'd have to maybe cut the stitching out on the top and then uh, you, usually you either do it like on the on the suit pant but yeah the suit he had that day was too nice I, I like that. So they took all your street clothes and just built a shooter tutor in the net where it was you. Yeah. <laughs> so so there's a there's a that's third good. third person that's sewed my socks. Co conspirator here. Yeah. So we I don't know who did it. So I have my I think I'm know who I'm gonna try and get back to. Okay. All right. That's we'll good. See. We'll have to leave it at that. I also hear like you're a riddle guy, right? Yep. Do you like creating riddles, solving riddles? No, it's it's more it at in the beginning we we went a little back and forth we in the medical room usually after warm ups or right before the warm ups we i walked in there and either they had a riddle for me or or i had one for them and then you kind of go up out for warm ups and you're like what is this riddle and then you like try and get it through the game that's yeah that's also one thing you do when you're standing there doing nothing you like figure out this solve this riddle yeah, solve this riddle and then you you stand there um so yeah, I, not too much like creating them. It's it's too much of a work. It's easy to just Google them and, and find something and make the other ones think about them. And then and then they came back with one that I don't know about. John is a highly educated individual from Edina and then Austin <laughs> College. Would you have any riddles? Do you have a favorite riddle that he could maybe try to solve on the fly here? Oh wow, this is a good idea. <laughs> okay, yeah. If you do, by the way, that's even scarier. <laughs> Uh, I did have one go-to riddle for a long time. Uh, There's one where it's like a somebody's son is in the operating table and somebody's a doctor, and I don't know. I remember that from back in the day. Um, hey, you said you're a gamer? Yep. And so what do you play? Uh, League of Legends and uh, Counter-Strike. Okay. League of Legends, is that what Jesper played too? He plays a lot of Counter-Strike, I think. Okay. And who else on the team... Uh, is a gamer and do you play with guys from the wild or not really well krill is a big gamer i always see him online on on <laughs> on discord and, and that stuff it feels like he plays a lot of dota 2 um 
after games is a lot of guys that play like Call of Duty and stuff like that. So right now we're too many Swedes. So I'm I'm the one that's left out playing some other games instead. But yeah, they play Call of Duty after after games. Is Kirill a good gamer? Yeah, yeah, no, he yeah, he takes it serious. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, speaking of gaming, what goes on? How, how's your like it's cards at the Swede table on the airplane, right? So there's what? How many tables on the plane? Two total? Four. Uh, three. Three? Who, what's the other one? Coach's one. Oh, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> I, don't, I never get to see up there. But there's the the table up front and then the Swede table. Yep. And the Swede table is obviously you, Jojo, Becker, and Broads. And what do you guys play? Seven up, seven down. All the time? Yeah. Who's the best? Jojo. Really? He, yeah, he, he I think it's count like he's actually counting the cards and like overthinking all of it. Cuz he then, wins every time? Not all the time cuz me and Broads are doing this we don't think too much. We just throw out the cards sometimes and and Jojo gets super frustrated cuz he's he actually <laughs> has a plan. <laughs> that doesn't it's, make sense to yeah, do that. No, yeah, cuz then you're either over or under, obviously cuz you can't be even and then we always call too much or way too little, and Jojo is just sitting there trying to think and calculate, cal- calculate and, and plan everything out, and then we just screw him up every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so sometimes he, he's been driving me home from, from the airport, and he's just sitting there super, super rattled. Just, he just can't talk. He's so yeah, mad about yeah, that. He's, he's like, you called five, seven up, seven down, and only yeah, got two. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, like, you didn't even have close to those cards to call five, and he's just... Rattle. So, what are you guys? Are you playing with further per diem? Because that's how it used to be. You sit, walk on the airplane, you get a packet full of per diem cash, and then you just play cards with your per diem cash. But now, what? You guys do IOUs or Venmo? Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, we we still do cash. Because uh, Whitey got this AT, got this ATM now. In yeah, this the, is great. In the in the game ring, so we just go there and take out cash. <laughs> the guys need to get, so they had an ATM brought into like the arena so they could get their cash. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Whitey got an ATM. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, what's the other table on the plane? So coaches, Swedes, and what's the third table? So that's Maroon, Suki, Krill, Hartman, and then I think. Addy is sometimes part of that table, like jumping and playing sometimes. Yeah, that one will get like floaters, I yeah. think, right? Yeah. yeah, they have those four four Seats. normal players, and then yeah. they have like someone that come and play now and then. Yeah, they rent a seat. Yeah. And then if you're like Faber, or one of, you just sit in a seat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you you it's like... It's, you, yeah, you saw the commercial. He puts on his class, and then he's just reading the book. <laughs> It's a nice yeah, yeah, he just he's just sitting there with his glasses, his tortoise shells. <laughs> so that's like buckets off and warm up. You have to earn the the spot on the table. Okay. That's good to know. I like those two tables, though. That's fun. The sweet, although the godfather of the Swedish mafia is sitting at the other table. He just yeah. Zuki. It, it's just I think it's just there hustling the other guys. Okay. Yeah. He's there just he's funneling it back to Sweden. Yeah. Do you guys have to bring like 10% of all games up from your table and hand it over to Zuki? <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we also have to pay for dinner a lot of the times. <laughs> what game do they play at the other table? I think they play the same game. Okay, 7-Up. Yeah. The other game that's popular on the airplane sometimes is Schnarps. Yeah, we used to play that a lot before JoJo came to the team, but it's JoJo is like, there's no skill in this. It's just getting good cards and luck. So he, he, he wants to have those, the opportunity to think. And that's where you play the seven up, seven down. Makes sense. Say, do you ever feel left out because they're, you're in like the land of the Apple iPhone and group chats and everything, <laughs> and you're you're still hanging on to this Android? So there, well, I think. Whoa, there's, whoa, whoa, whoa! You have an Android? Yep. No. And um, I think it's it's been it's been, from my understanding, a harsh punishment. But they've kind of had to kick you off the group chat. So that everything can remain blue and yeah. it's not green. Yeah, no, they, they never tried to put me in the group chat in the first place. <laughs> so you're the only one not in the group chat. Yeah, the only one. Uh, so the only one I'm texting with is Whitey all the time. I just see the schedule and that's it. Never see any funny pictures or, or text messages or we're going out to drinking after this win or something like that. And I, You're just in your room. Yeah, just in my room. Doing <laughs> Gaming. <that. laughs> 
Eating those berries. Yep. Um, Is there any part of you want to just maybe get like an iPhone and just have it be for the chat? Or are you just like, no, I'm holding steady? Yeah, it, it, it crossed my mind. I, I said to Wadi, like, when you're, when you're going to switch your phone, I buy your old phone. And then I just have that for the group chat. <laughs> that's a smart play. Yeah, yeah, that's great. No FOMO, though. You don't, you don't miss out? You don't feel like you're missing out on any of that? No. No, they they can still reach me. I I still have a phone number. It's just I don't know why everyone hates those screen text messages. Well, the I, the reason that they drive me bananas is because if you have a group chat with 20 something people and then you have the one Android and then everybody like laughs or they react to the it, you know, you get like a new text message every time somebody reacts to it. So you'll have like 30 text messages and you scroll down and you're like so and so liked, so and so liked. So-and-so and when you liked. send the attachment Normally, the picture would just show up in the group. I think if one of them's an Android, then you just get like a link. It's like pixelated yeah. or it doesn't show up. It's, yeah. I like that the goalie's on the Android, though. You know, he's got his own world, his own space. You don't need to be in that shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I had the option because I, I dropped my phone this summer and I had to get a new one. And I, I was waiting for the new Google and iPhone release their new phones. Pretty, pretty close to each other. So I was like, should I do this iPhone 15? And I was I was there going through all the ordering thing. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then I, I order a brand new Google instead. And, and here we are. And here we are, all alone. It could have been titanium. Hey, why does, why does Sweden produce so many good goaltenders? Good question. Um... I've heard, I've honestly heard that they Sweden would be like they'll pick the best athletes at the young age and try to encourage them to play goaltender because it's like an athletic position and it gives I don't know the the town the team whatever a competitive advantage. Is there any truth to that or is it just like kids I, choose? Yeah, I I think the kids choose. I I've heard a lot of stories about North America like it's so expensive to be a goalie you have to buy all the equipment yourself and then that excludes a lot of the players from from trying to be a goalie. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly in Sweden, at least all the teams I played for is usually you have the SHL team, the the pro team, and then you have under twenty eighteen all the way down to I don't know six years old, and and the the organizations are supplying the the goalies with pads and everything. So so the only thing you have to buy if you're a goalie is your own skates, sticks, and a helmet. So that like it takes away the whole economic component to it. Yeah, to being a goalie. And then, let's say you have twenty five kids on the on the team. Everyone at a younger age, everyone tries being a goalie. Uh, at least like one practice, and then you usually get like five or six that like really want to try it. And then, I think that gives it like more opportunity of course to to create the best ones yeah well, i mean kind of makes sense you know i mean i've never thought about it but it just it kind of floors me that sweden kicks out so many good goaltenders um you just signed a big ticket over the summer congrats on that you buy anything cool other than a google phone <laughs> no not yet I, I haven't seen a paycheck yet so uh, that is the dirty little secret in when the it nhl takes a while well, so you only get paid from the first day of the regular season to the last day of the regular okay. season. And then, so you get paid every two weeks. So you got to work the first two weeks, and then it takes them like a week to get your paycheck. So you're not going to get a paycheck for the, like the first three weeks of the regular season. Yeah, yeah so next summer probably. Something. Next summer? Yeah. You get that first paycheck, you might go to Shake Shack and celebrate, <laughs> and then something big in the summer. Yeah, good. How was that experience? Nerve wracking at all? Like, I, I mean, you go through the summer, you've you've got a deal going, and then, you know, you don't you don't really know how it's going to materialize. Yeah, Bill is pretty terrifying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we we went the whole summer, and and me and my agent was like, yeah, it's going to be fine. We're we have good conversations with Billy. It's it's going to go smooth, all that, and then draft goes by, all that goes by, and it's like, yeah, we're going to file for arbitration, to to like. That that's pretty much what the agent said, and and I was like oh, arbitration. Then it's like not in our hands anymore. Then we go and do some some judge like deciding it for us, and then you only sign the one year deal, and that was kind of a little nerve wracking. Just waiting, and then then fortunately Billy was on a vacation somewhere, 
that that's my thought process. Bill was on a vacation. He didn't want to fly to Toronto to go to that arbitration. Arbitration. <laughs> so then that's why he signed me, I think. Yeah, funny. That makes sense. Yeah, well, nonetheless, you got the deal done. Congrats. Um, well, we appreciate you having you, man. We 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 know that the dog's been keeping you up and everything like that. So we, we don't want to take too much time this afternoon. But uh, yeah, appreciate you stopping by. It's always fun chatting with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for being here. Thanks, Gus. All right, that was the Gus boss, how, howdy voice. Uh, he, he's a good time. He'll be even more fun the more uh, we get used to him. How about Zuccarello, the Don? Well, it's supr- kind of surprising, but also not surprising. He, he speaks all the languages. I think he just explained to the Swedes, he's like, hey, <laughs> so if, if I'm a part of this, I'm the number one guy. And they were like, well, we don't really need him to be a part of it. And then they were like, fine, just it's fine. Yeah, he's the, he's running the show. Uh, and he doesn't even sit at their table. At the card table? Yeah, no, no but he runs the, the card game. He's, he's watching. <laughs> hey, okay, hands above the table. Yeah, he's uh, he's an international man of mystery, Matt's Zuccarello. So I see you have a, a 7 o'clock shadow going right now. Mm-hmm. Um, is are, are you cheating? No, I am going to shave down tomorrow. Uh, I, I, October ends. Uh, November is also known as November is also known as Movember. Correct. So you're going to grow out the mustache. Yeah, I want to. I want to get furry for the month. I want to try to help the team a little bit. Um, you know, just staring at my phone at Missoula restaurants and wanting them to win isn't enough. I want to. You want to do more. I want to. I want to grow some stuff. And I, I, I don't know if it's competitive between us, like a. Oh, so you, so I'm gonna grow one too. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> yep, yep. So we sorted that out. I talked to Valleys. They said it's in your contract. So uh, I think, I think you, uh, you grow it out. I grow it out, and then we just kind of let the people see. You know, do they like a Poncherello? You know, or John from Chips? You know, or like what? What's the, you know, what's the difference? You know? So let's see. What What are you gonna go with? Well, I, I was thinking. I, I, I actually was thinking about how I could beat you. And as for coming from the guy that said he didn't want it to be competitive. Well, <laughs> I kind of I want it to be competitive if, if I win. <laughs> Otherwise, if I'm not going to win, I don't even want it to be a contest. So I, I think my only shot against you is to go either handlebars or there's kind of a Western one where it's, it's just a little handlebar and then a little here like Deadwood. Because I, I just with a straight up mustache, I don't think I can beat you. I think that's what it has to be to beat me is a straight up mustache. To beat the, you, the strength of the strength of my mustache is its actual weakness. How bad it is is what makes it good. So the I think the only way to beat that would be to have an actual mustache that's really good. Everything else seems like it's a gimmick, like a you're novelty. chasing it, like you're chasing it, like you're trying too hard. Yeah. So you, I think you just got to go lip crease to lip crease and just really nourish it. Like get some of those Duke Cannon products. Just make yeah, sure that yeah. it's that it's looking full, fresh, clean. You don't have any food stuck in there or anything. And then if you have a high quality, like a lot of hair per capita square lip. I don't know what you'd call it. It's not a square inch. Well, I got the scar. So oh, we'll see. You want to show that off, I we'll bet. see how much it grows. This is in. why he wants to grow it out. <laughs> Probably won't grow with that scar, that big-time hockey scar. No, I think it's I, it, I think November, you know, there's a trip to Sweden there. Seems like the right time to kind of get involved. Like, let's, let's publicly make a statement on our own faces about this hockey team. You know what they say about, uh, like, like facial hair, hair in general, it's that good nutrition and, and quality food helps it grow and look healthy, strong, vibrant. Um, and I think uh, maybe we should have a word from our sponsors here because we might know somebody uh, that can help us procure some of these products that if we consume, will make that mustache full and voluptuous, specifically milk. Wild on 7th has a brand new sponsor. We couldn't be more excited about them. Cub. If you're looking for some fresh, delicious milk, you're going to want to check out Cub. 48 hours from farm to shelf. You're not going to find that anywhere else. You're going to pay less. So head on into your favorite neighborhood grocery store, 
cub and get yourself some delicious milk. Lean into it and end up with a Jake Middleton sized milk mustache. Thank you for being here, cub. You know what, King, are you feeling overwhelmed by growing to-do list and a shrinking schedule? I mean, I know you're busy, that's for sure. Spending more time stressing over household repairs than enjoying life? Well, guess what, King, you're not alone because, I mean, you know that I always got that stuff. And Aquarius Home Services has your back. They're your trusted local. Let us tackle your to-do list team. Aquarius Home Services is here to assist, whether it's your furnace, electrical work, even your plumbing giving you a hard time. You choose the service, they'll handle the fix and take $98 off the repair cost right now. That's right. For any furnace, plumbing, or electrical repair, they're slashing $98 from their price. Watch your to-do list shrink while you reclaim your time. No more worrying about flickering lights, leaking toilets, or noisy faucets. They're dedicated professionals. Respect your home and your, t- your time. Aquarius believes in earning the right to be recommended. They're just a click away at AquariusHomeServices.com. So yeah, the mustache wars to be continued. I, do you think the guys will grow them? What like what is the stat, current status of Movember just globally, right? So raises money for prostate cancer. You know, correct? you know what we're yeah, you know what we're gonna have to do though. If we're gonna do this, we have to legitimately probably open up an account and use the socials and try to raise money. What I've always done, and I kind of bit, I'm kind of a phony, is just grow a mustache. And then it gets it. It still helps because it, it's recognition. Everybody asks, "What are you growing it for?" Movember, Men's Health. But I've never been one of those guys that's like, "Yeah, go here and help donate." You know, I've never raised money for Movember and Men's Health. Um, so if we're gonna do it, I think I think we got to have the 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 podcast actually have a page and raise money for it. What do you think? We got to monetize. Well, that's what the kids for say. the cause. All right. Yeah, I'm down with but that. But then that also makes it real. You can't quit after 50 So you're days. saying a vote, a vote is like is like dollar or something, and then you could see who the winner is? I, no, it's just like you you just do it, and it's much like being sponsored, I think, for a marathon. Like there, You just go say, hey, support me in this. They donate money, and then you go through your journey of growing a mustache, and um, they commend you for walking around embarrassed with this tiny little duster on your lip for thirty some days, and um, out of All that, right, I'm down. I'm down. Internet. We do got to go clean tomorrow, though, on Halloween. Yeah, you got to knock her down, and you got to document that. I think so. I'll send you a video when I clean things up tomorrow. But uh, yeah, let's we'll raise it, and we, what do we just send that up at? Uh, November. Some sort of, is it just the Movember page? And we'll yeah. get, okay, so we'll do that. So you've never done that. I've never, You've never like, been never directed people to donate money. So this might be the year. I like it. And I then like we'll, it. we'll, maybe we'll try to get the players on board too. And yeah. Stuff. Tie in a U10A, maybe get all them going. Out with too. mustaches. Yeah, I think so. Um, do you have That's any other so notes good. from, I, I, I just hope everybody listened to the first five minutes of this podcast because whatever happened with these, uh, but what's that movie where they're like warriors come out and play i mean you like I met, you met the real like warriors in new york warriors come out to play uh, what the little person was he standing on like i'm picturing him standing on pegs on the front of his bike and just gliding or was he pedaling hard he, he was pedaling he was pedaling did anyone have a mohawk or like, what were they dressed like, this gang? So the the little person had like a mask on too. So like, like a, a Halloween mask? Uh, how do you say it? Like a balaclava or black lava? You know that? You know what I'm talking about? Like the winter mask where it covers your head, but it opens the eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it has like a spot open for your mouth yeah. too. That's basically what, what he was wearing. Okay. And then everybody else was just dressed normally behind him. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's the funniest. So did you call your wife and exp- like ex- try to explain that story? No. I mean, how do you even, no one would even believe it. I know. That's why I didn't try. <laughs> I, but the headline is actually better than the story. What's the headline? Well, write the headline. The headline would be... Man on roller street corner bl- gets egged. Rollerblading vi- superhero defends honor of Ryan Carter, who was egged by... Bike gang led by little person. Yeah. I mean, that's a long headline, but yeah, that's 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 so great. And I love that you have the fake bag. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Thanks for the distraction this week. It was 
uh, yeah, those three road games, not our best. Um, but between your adventure and, uh, and your bag, like I, you did a really good job with shiny objects this week. <laughs> like, I don't even, I'm kind of like, good, I'm fine. <laughs> We're so back. The devils are coming to town in the Rangers. Sure. Bring it's them okay. on. Yeah. Bring them on. 500. It's basically like starting again. It's yeah. game one. Let's go. Thank you, Carts. We're here. Till it's here. Hey, Carts. This is your video reminder. Movember Eve. Take things down to the nubs. All the way. Don't cheat. Let's start this fight fair and square. Movember Eve. Clean up. Show proof. Documentation. Take your picture with the front page of the newspaper. So I know it was today. No cheating. Bye. Video evidence. <laughs>